What's up guys? Uh, another update coming at you. It is, uh, I almost forget what night of the week it is. It is Tuesday night, late. I'm just finishing up here. Um, I'm sure you've already seen the last update. We got everything running, squared away, fuel system's good. Took it out for a test spin. It was crazy. Tonight's update, we're starting on the floor. Um, let me see, let me show you. Here you go. Almost 8 o'clock at night. I'm calling it quits. Getting out of here for the night. But I'll let you see. We've got the start of a floor in here. So as you can see, I'm building it up from the frame. We're building up a few layers of wood. Getting it just over those tires. But I got one more piece. One more piece to build this up. Get it a little bit more. And then... The mock floor I got sitting over there, that's the full width. Um, yeah, one, one more piece, three quarter to build this up. Then I'm bringing the big piece of floor that's coming in here. The whole thing's getting covered side to side. Um, so yeah, you can see, I'll tell you a breakdown in the details of how and why and everything. So first layer that's down on the frame some basic liquid nails, heavy duty, construction, all purpose, uh, rated for outdoor use, all that stuff. So I use that between the, uh, basically the steel and the wood, use that on the frame, fasten them two together. Everything else is wood glue. Got it coated everywhere, smearing it all around. I like to uh, take my jug of glue and just dump it around in there. And they usually get me a scrap piece of, uh, scrap piece of cardboard or something and use it like a like a squeegee and I just shove it around smear it around so I get every last square inch of wood you see in there gets coated with glue put the wood in and then get on there myself mash it down get it into place shoot some screws in it so I've got some screws run through everything hold it all tight this area up here in the floor a lot of people ask why I didn't cut it all the way up at the B pillar because I'm building all the way to the B pillar well, you're starting to see why. I left me a good bit of overlap. Now, in case you didn't hear the story before, there was a previous truck I built. Um, it wasn't a full SUV like this. This was a mini truck. And because of the way it was with the cab and the bed and everything being separate, we had to cut it up here at the floor. So it didn't have a whole lot of overlap where the, the wood and everything joined together. And uh, that truck was so loud, it actually ended up blowing the floor apart down there. And that was a just a big catastrophe it happened to us at finals one year, running around trying to get that fixed. Well, I'm not gonna have that issue in this thing. So as you can see, I've got plenty of room. Uh, I'll actually put a tape measure on it for you right here. So I've got almost uh, 18 inches up here to the B pillar, 18, 19, 20-ish. But uh, yeah, so I've got plenty of room. And underneath it, you probably already recognize that is spray foam. So right now where I'm starting to build the wood forward a little bit, yep, I'm filling up all the voids with spray foam. It's just the cheap, great stuff, nothing expensive, because all I'm using it for is just filling some voids, doing a little ceiling. I'm going to let this stuff expand. Anything I don't need, I can come right back, chip it off with a knife, cut it off, take care of that real easy. So um, anyway, yeah, I told you I'm calling it quit for the night, but next step, one more piece of wood this side is going to go between the tires. I got to build this up because this part of the floor still isn't quite level. This part of the floor sits up a little bit higher than that wood. So I got to get one more piece of three quarter up there, get this all level. I might get a few little scrap pieces up here, fill this area in with a little bit of wood so I don't have so much spray foam. But yeah, that'll, that'll be on the goal for tomorrow night. Get some more pieces in here. All this stuff I put down the floor here, I'm actually going to be spray foaming in so the foam can seal and glue and take care of all that business there. And uh, one more layer up here, and then big sheets of wood starting to go across. So it's coming together. Keep in mind, this, this floor, at least the, the, the first layer, once I get it, that piece of wood in here that goes all the way side to side, that piece will go all the way to the back. That's the only piece of wood that'll go all the way to the back. Um, after that, everything else will taper forward a little bit because the box, keep in mind, isn't going all the way back there. We're keeping that room for our cap banks to sink down in the floor a little bit. So that's it. That's tonight's update. Uh, Tuesday night, 8 o'clock. 
I'm heading home. Stay tuned. We'll be back tomorrow finishing this floor up and probably get started on the roof. Oh, I'll go ahead and tell you now. So between the roof braces, I'm going to cut some sheets of wood that are just big enough to fit up in there. Shoot some glue up in there. Probably a little spray foam around the edges or spray foam the whole thing. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I'll figure that out. But liquid nails, spray foam, put it up in there. I'm going to wedge something up, mash that stuff up the roof, let it glue to the roof. Not shooting these sheet metal screws, nothing, ain't, ain't doing any of that. I'm just going to let it glue to the roof, and that's going to give me an attachment point. So once I got those wood pieces stuck up there, every piece I build down from there, I can glue to that, and I can just build off of it. So my plan is to build the floor up, build the roof down. Then once I get the internal height that I need, then I'm going to start cutting pieces for the sides. And just come in here and just start layering the sides and backfill and... All that good stuff. So stay tuned. You're going to see it as we build it. That's it for the night. Be right back tomorrow night. What's up, guys? We're back. It's a new day. Uh, it has been ridiculously busy lately. Uh, work's been busy. Personal life's been busy. Haven't got much done. It is now Sunday morning. I'm up here trying to really get on this thing, get a hard full day's work in this Sunday. I'll be honest, I don't even remember where I left off last. I haven't went and reviewed any of my previous footage to see where I stopped. So I'm just gonna give you an update of where we're at now. Um, I have started putting some wood down in the back. So I'll get in here and show you. You can see under there, coming up off the frame, we already got four layers. And then finally here is the actual start of the floor. And you can see just how close that is to the tire. Not much room there at all. This is why we're running a solid suspension. The, uh, we got steel welded here in the back because just don't have much room for give. And still got to do a whole lot of building. Whole lot of more wood to get added back here, building this enclosure. Whole lot of subs, amps, super caps, wire. So can't afford for any suspension sag, can't afford to hit any bumps, have that move at all because it is super tight in there. Now, um, as far as strength, keep in mind, again, coming up from the frame to build up and get all this where I can uh, start getting whole sheets of wood in here. Uh, there's four layers of wood already underneath this. Of course, it's not full width, but there's, there's four layers of wood under there. This is the start of the floor. So this is layer number one of the four layers that's gonna build home floor. So we got three more layers to go here. And we're already, already pretty, uh, getting pretty strong in there. So I know, I'll say again, I know these layers in here, they don't come all the way out, but keep this in mind too. The enclosure itself really isn't gonna come all the way out to here either. Um, right now, Going by my measure, it's my width, and the width I need to stay internal on enclosure, I'm gonna end up with five layers per side. So uh, this is gonna be built over about three and three quarter inches, same on that side, We're coming over three and three quarter inches, and uh, then we'll have our, our internal space here. The back, you're gonna see, starting to do some uh, piecing together, so that's gonna happen a lot because of how long this is. So this is this sheet here we got on the floor. This is a full 60 inches. This is as long as what these pieces are. So I had to piece a little six inch piece there on the back, which helps because I got a notch around my filler neck. And I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna do some piecing here in the front. So right now you see I'm I'm well well behind the B pillar. So this is where I don't know. This is gonna be a lot of cutting, testing, fitting. I'm not cutting into this B pillar area to notch any of this out. I'm going to form the wood around it as I go. So I've got this sheet that's full width, butted up here, right where it, it can stay flat, right where this B-pillar sheet metal starts to curve up, because I'm not cutting in, in any of that. And uh, the next piece I put in here on the floor, I'm going to notch the rear corner of it. It's going to slide all the way back. So in the very back, I was walk around here. Uh, you can see how the wood's staggering up. Um, so in the very back, the full width, this is only going to be two layers tall, because Keep also in mind, the enclosure doesn't come all the way here to the back. So I'm going to have two full layers of wood going all the way to the side, and that's going to be to build our box. It's going to get built here down on the floor to uh, hold our super caps. And then once we start the enclosure, I've already done some measuring, and uh, just a rough estimate, our enclosure is going to stop about right there. Um, it's technically going to be 18 inches from the back, which should be about in this area, is where our enclosure is going to stop. 
So from here back, there'll be one more layer and then that's it. So I'm only coming from here forward with the wood from then on out. And uh, to go, go ahead and throw how I'm gonna assemble that together, uh, let's see if, see if I can uh, get y'all to picture it. So next, I gotta clean this up where I've been in here doing some work. Oh, oh, real quick, let me show you. Got some wood on the roof. Uh, basically what I did in here, forgot I'd done this. Let me go ahead and show it. So I got in here, I cut some pieces that were wide enough. They don't hit my uh, roof rack bolt or, or rivets, whatever you want to call them. For right now, I think I am going to keep the roof rack on here. Might have some uh, future plans that involve that roof rack later. I'm going to keep it on for now. If I ever need to delete it, shave it off later, that'll be fine. But for now, I'm going to keep it. So my first layer of wood that kind of, I'm going to say, sinks into the roof because it's in between these roof braces you see here. It's in between my, my rivets that are uh, up here to mount the roof rack. Cut a piece just wide enough to fit easy. Got it up here. And I just use some basic spray foam, some of the same cheap spray foam you see there. It works great as a glue. So I held the piece up, shot some spray foam in there, put it in place, and then I used uh, just some little pieces of wood like this. And I actually took one and just kind of slap it up here, set a sheet metal screw through it just to hold it temporarily. Did the same here, little piece of wood, some sheet metal screws to go in and in the back. So those kind of held it in place. I did need to push it a hair more than what those was holding it. So I cut, I don't know where I set them, but I cut some longer strips of wood, got them in here, wedged them into place. And now, I don't know if you can see, but that's about perfectly flush the way I want it. Same back here, it's about perfectly flush the way I want it. This one hangs down just a hair, but it's nothing for me to get up in there, wedge it, get it fit into place the way I need, fix that one. So I got me some wood attached to the roof and I'm gonna use this to start my roof build down. So now, any more wood, uh, as I start building it down, I can put a piece up. I'm essentially gonna get me a full 60 inch piece front to back, full 60 inches, cut it just wide enough where I, um, I might have to stay within these, these fine, uh, darn, stay within these grooves for right now, but cut it as wide as I can go while keeping it flat against here. Get that piece up. I got something I can screw to so I can shoot some foam, glue, everything I want to do, put it up, screw it into place. Then the next piece down, I can go a little bit wider, come over to this edge right here, come a little bit wider with it, do my foam, my uh, glue, set it up, screw it into place. So now, back to where I was. See if we can envision where I'm going. Clean up the floor, give me some glue down, another sheet of wood on the floor. So I've got the four sheets coming up off the frame. I'm gonna have two full size sheets here. Then I'm gonna stop with the floor. There's gonna be two more. It's gonna be four layers, starting with this one, three more layers coming up. Same with the roof. The roof's gonna be four layers coming down. Those are just some pieces to get in there, get in between the roof braces. I'm gonna have four layers of wood coming out of that. But to start, I'm gonna do two on the floor, two on the roof, then I'm gonna start on my sides. And like I already hinted, because of uh, the internal measurements I need to keep, I've got room to do five layers of wood on each side. Now, the, uh, the sides curve, so I can't do full, full height layers, which um, is gonna be basically about uh, 37 inches internal is what I keep, but I can't, I can't do full size. So this is where it might be easier to see this way if you can see this curve right here, I'll basically get a piece, come in, keep it as flat as what I can, as tall as what I can go right before it starts to curve. So that'll be the first piece. The next piece will go a little bit taller and I'll just cut the pieces taller and taller to stagger as I layer them out, those five layers per side. So then, uh, yeah, so two layers floor, two layers roof, then I'm gonna build the sides in five layers per side, then I'm gonna go back and internally again, two more layers on the floor, two more layers on the roof. So everything will interlock as I build it in together and uh, help hold everything and just make those, make those joints a little stronger so it's not just one joint touching, they literally zigzag and anyway, it just adds strength. It'll also make it easier because the way, like I showed you, I've piecing together back here, there's gonna be a lot a lot of little pieces together up here <clears throat> to get this the exact shape I want and to get it to contour that B pillar. You know, that B pillar isn't straight either. You see, especially right here, it's got a funky curve to it. So I'm actually gonna layer wood 
and work this in little by little to contour exactly that B pillar exactly the way I want it. So that's my goal for the day. I'm gonna make an attempt, full day's work. We're building a wall. Stay tuned, guys. All right, so here's something I thought you guys might be interested in. Here's a sheet of the uh, Baltic birch that we use. You can see that nice, pretty Baltic birch, all them layers. And uh, I got my official U-line scale down here. And I'm gonna see if I can one-handed throw this on a scale and balance it and show y'all how much a full sheet of this weighs. All right, so I'm just trying to hold it just good enough to balance it. Not putting any, uh, any extra weight on it. But there we go. So we're at about 63 pounds per sheet. And as of right now, um, I'm hitting about four sheets. Now I know all the floor isn't full sheets. The top two layers are only missing six inches cut off the edge. The four under that are missing some chunks cut off, but those will get pieced in later. Like the two partial pieces that are on the roof right now, the uh, partial pieces, there's a six inch piece I've got in the back filling up a gap. I'm about to do another six inch piece in the front to fill up a gap. I've got some smaller pieces underneath filling up some gaps. So all the scraps I'm cutting off of this will go back in the truck to fill up smaller gaps here and there. So right now, yeah, there's pretty much officially uh, six full sheets of wood in that truck at that uh, 63 pounds of sheet. By the time it's all said and done, the enclosure alone is gonna be at least 22 sheets of wood. So people keep asking about weight. Um, it's gonna be about 22 full sheets of wood going in the truck just to get the shell built. And uh, it's 63 pounds a sheet. Then I've got to start cutting tubes. Now the cook tubes obviously are going to be missing a whole lot of wood. They're not going to be the full 63 pounds of weight. Um, but those are something when I get the tubes built, we can weigh them later. I'll throw them on a scale, throw you, but rough estimate right now, the shell alone, 22 sheets of wood plus, because I might do some other backfilling here and there where I need to. And uh, I might actually make the back wall a little thicker than the initial plan four sheets. And um, plus that's also not counting the loading wall that, that I'm building in. That's just me doing some, uh, plywood skin on the front and inside of the loaning wall. But yeah, rough estimate, minimum 22 sheets for the shell, 63 pounds a sheet. That's just how much the shell alone is going to weigh going in this truck. Not to mention subs, amps, cap banks, wire. Uh, last time I wired a big vehicle, we used several spools of one out wire. And um, it, it, it was basically, it was a few hundred pounds, a few hundred pounds of just wire going into a big build like this. So there you go first rough estimate of how much weight is going to be getting added. You can do the math yourself, 22 times 63 just for that shell. All right, so the last layer of the floor for now is in. Shows you how I take my glue and I pour big globs of it all around. Then I just use me a little simple piece of cardboard like a squeegee and bed and smear and get that everywhere. Got that in, uh, saw me cutting. Looks like the corner of my roof braces were angling a little bit. They were going to be in the way from keeping my wood flat. Um, I might have to beat that piece a little bit more. But yeah, so I had to come in, notch those roof braces. Going to want this to stay flat piece of wood going. Um, get my wood cut for the roof so I can go ahead and get two layers built down. One layer is going to be right now 37 inches. It's going to stay inside of this. The uh, next layer, this should come down far enough. The next layer should go out and uh, be a little bit wider. So I'm gonna get those two layers built down. Then we can start on the, uh, then we start on the sides. Ready for another time lapse? Hope y'all appreciate these. Y'all told me in the comments you wanna see some time lapse. So I'm throwing some in there this time for you. All right guys, this will be the final update for the day. Uh, unfortunately, time has run out for me. I gotta head out early, personal life calls, but show you what I've got done. So far, I had to put the camera down and just get to work. I'm covered in sawdust. Let me tell you, it's a little bit of a pain cutting all these big sheets of wood by yourself. Uh, <laughs> you ain't live life till you've screwed whole sheets of wood up in the roof of a vehicle uh, all by yourself, trying to hold them up there and uh, screw them in. I, I did not have the jack in place when I did that. I, I should have, it probably made it a lot easier. But uh, explain this. 
So after I got the roof in, floor, and I started doing some work, doing some measuring, turns out, I'm guess from not having any body mounts left in the back of the truck, I had about three quarter inches sag on the back. So I've got the jack in here, got a, uh, got a board put up to the roof to jack it up that three quarter of an inch for me, try and get everything back square. I've been cutting side pieces. You can see both sides, keeping them the same. As of right now, there are four layers. And you can see how I taper them up to kind of match with that curve of the uh, B and C pillar up there. Trying to match that curve as I go. This line you see, if you can see that line drawn there on the ground, but basically where those three layers are stopping, that is the back of the enclosure. That's where it's gonna stop. Uh, this other board, like right here, this is coming back further and I'm gonna piece this in because I wanna box this whole back area out as far as the sides. I'm gonna bring some wood on up, finish boxing this off. On this side, since I still have the filler neck here, I'm gonna completely box this filler neck in, close that off. Uh, one of the things I'm going to be doing, and right now all the pieces are just sitting here. They're not attached. They're not glued in. I'm just cutting and mocking up because there's a lot of back and forth work, cutting, putting the wood in place, making sure it's right, taking it back, cutting again, test fitting, just back and forth. So the area you see back up in here, I know it's dark, but all that gap you see left, well, that's that area. I'm filling in with that two-part foam, that really, really strong 16-pound foam from, U from U.S. Composites. Looks like the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to start with my shortest piece of wood, have all the others out of my way. I'm going to get that piece, get it in here, do a little bit of spray foam around the fender well. I'm going to come around here and show you how this is looking right now. You can see the fender well. And, and again, none of, none of this is attached or anything yet. It's just sitting here. So, oh, sorry. On the inside, I'm going to get in here, do put here some great stuff, some cheap spray foam around here, help seal off this edge so that when I pour in the good foam, it doesn't just run right out. I've experienced that before. Uh, it's a big waste of money. So, yeah, get this piece in, get some glue down, run some great stuff around it. And uh, I don't know if I can show you from this edge. No, I ain't going to be able to. Anyway, starting with just that one piece, just the one short piece, I'm gonna get in here, shoot some uh, self-tappers through something like this right here. Just a little short self-tapping sheet metal screw. Shoot them through the wood into some of the body. Hold that there. So I got my glue, got my foam, help seal it into place. Once it is sealed in place and locked in, before I start adding other wood, I'm going to come in and start pouring the good foam in from the inside. Pour it in, build it up. Then I'll come in little by little, add another layer of wood and pour. Add another layer of wood and pour and build this up from the inside and uh, do it as I go. That's, that's my in intentions right now. We're going to see how well that works. So um, I do have one more vertical piece to cut for the sides. And uh, in case you ain't noticed my little template piece up there, uh, Still got work to go. Still got some more testing and fitting. So the roof is gonna come down two more layers, another inch and a half. The floor is gonna come up two more layers, another inch and a half. You're probably already noticing that curve where that roof tapers in the way it does, that's not gonna match up. Well, that's why you see my template. Walk around here, you can probably see it way better. You can see this template I got sitting in here and it's just kind of chilling, mocked up in place you see I got some angles drawn. Now they're not perfect, they're, it's just a rough template, but that's about what the top of this enclosure is gonna look like. I'm gonna get in here after I bring this another inch and a half down, we're gonna bring the, bring the roof down some more. Um, one more layer here on the side, so this is gonna come in another three quarter of an inch. I'm gonna come in and do angles up here at the corner to angle that off, seal it up good. Is it gonna affect anything? No, it is not. I've done that, that design before, I've done it in a, previous enclosures it will work perfect and of course once that's done I'm, I'm gonna come back in even after I fill this as I go I'm gonna come back in and uh, fill some foam in from the top to get that extra strong uh, the back I'm go and give you a preview of how I'm gonna do it when that time comes which you'll see it on video then so from this side uh, obviously I can't put full sheets of wood in um, they're gonna be too big just to even get in the truck so on 
What's coming this way to overlap the back of the enclosure, I'll be cutting um, separate pieces. So I'll be doing some just smaller pieces, piecing it together, putting them in, overlapping them. What I will do after the pieces go overlap from out here on the inside of the enclosure, basically one big internal piece I can cut, should be able to still, this is why I'm keeping the doors off the truck right now so I can, I got access to side wood in and out real easy. So an internal piece, once everything, once all the, the roof, the floor, the walls are all in, cut the piece, one piece big to match the back wall, and I can slide them in right in here, get them in, lock them pieces into place. That's the way it, the last two layers of the floor are gonna go. There's something that after everything else is done, um, except for the back wall obviously yet, but uh, after the, the side walls, the roof is all done, I'm gonna do two internal pieces, come in here, lock into the floor. So again, that means I got floor, walls, floor, everything interlocks into place instead of just one joint, I've got multiple interlocking joints. And um, uh, I guess I think that's it for right now for this update. Again, this is Sunday, calling it quits. Um, this video probably won't upload until Tuesday. So what little bit of work I get tomorrow night, I'll, I'll be back. You'll see me back in a few seconds when I end this to uh, try and get some of this stuff finished cutting and tied in tomorrow night. And then we'll get this video uploaded for an update. But for now, I guess that's it. You can see uh, oh, I got a little vertical piece of wood back there. And that's that's gonna get boxed off because from that line back, that's where all the super caps gonna sit. But uh, yeah, as soon as you start adding some wood in here, it, it starts shrinking quick. Where everything looked like we had so much room, it uh, it got it got small very fast. Oh, and another thing, people were like um, talking about how much wood, how many, how many sheets of wood was going to get used. And I started estimating, I'm like, it's going to be 22 sheets just to start to build this shell, just to do some of the side walls. So keep in mind right now, you know, I'm, I'm at four layers per side. Some of them aren't full. Some of them I was able to use some scrap pieces on. Some of them I was able to just cut one full sheet in half and split. But right now I have, let's see, four, six full sheets of wood I've used on the floor. Two full sheets of wood been used on the top and one, two, I think almost three full sheets of wood I've used to split and do the sides now. So um, six, eight, 11, 10, 10, 11 sheets of wood already in here and I am, I'm nowhere near done. And uh, so yeah, it's, it's adding up fast. Again, I still gotta do the baffle. I still gotta do the whole back wall. I still gotta do two more sheets of wood on the floor, two more sheets of wood on the roof and the next two sheets on each wall, those are gonna be full sheets of wood as well. So that's at least another two, four, six and uh, plus plus the back and that's just to just to attempt to get this shell started so that's it for tonight end of this video of course for y'all i'll be back in a few seconds but really it'll be tomorrow night after work before i get back to doing this stay tuned what's up guys we're back it is monday night after work uh starting to get dark outside I've got a ton of work done today. So go ahead and give y'all a look. We've got a wall going on. Helps when I had everything mostly cut, prepped out, uh, ready to just get in here and, and, and go to town. So as you can see, I got five layers thick on each side. Yes, they're all kinds of funky shapes. Uh, like I explained, they, uh, they taper. So start with a short one and they gradually get taller and taller to match the curve of the truck. The roof has its extra two layers, so there are four layers built down on the roof, plus the uh, two little pieces that are on the inside. The floor is not finished. The floor is still gonna get two more layers, but that's gonna be way into the future. <clears throat> but for now, the walls are, the straight part of the walls are done. I also was able to get in here, and as I started with the short piece, I got it in, shot some sheet metal screws in it to attach it to the inside of the body, hit these edges with some uh, just some cheap great stuff spray foam poured my 16 pound foam in there behind it and uh, as I worked my way up adding wood I kept mixing a uh, two-part foam and dumping it in just as fast as I can so if I can give you all a glimpse back there try and get y'all some light you can see where I'm filling everything back there with foam so it's filled up to just just above where the windows start you can see this side Try and give you all a glimpse back in there. And uh, pretty much ran out of room. 
it got got a little tight up in here on the top ran out of room to uh really get in there and, and be able to pour correctly so i'm gonna go ahead finish off my walls finish off my shell and now i know i, I explained how i was gonna run into a little angle up here at the top so i couldn't couldn't get it completely square and that's what i'm working on right now i got me some boards cut at a 45 so i'm gonna get up in there do a couple layers coming out in those corners gonna have a little little angle to it just like uh the template piece i showed you fitting up in there at the top and uh that's my next step get them in and after i get that in come in here and it'll probably do the back and uh on this side at least coming in mounting this way i'll probably use some of my scrap pieces cut some of the length stack them up patch them in and but i will have full solid sheets coming in from the inside for that back wall try and get one maybe two in from the inside so here's our update um after i get i think i think we'll go ahead and get some of the back wall put in uh, of course 45 is next get some of the back wall put in get in here with some little bit of foam seal off these back edges and this is the part where i mentioned way long ago the house gonna have to come in through the roof I'm gonna drill some holes in and that's how I'm gonna finish off the last little bit of gap that's left. Pour some of that two-part foam in through the roof, let it get in there behind there, get that, get that rock solid. So uh, yeah, the back doors, they're shut. They're sealed in, they're locked into place. Those back doors are not coming open. But uh, yeah, quick update. Let me get back to work. Cut the camera back on a little bit, show y'all what I'll get done before I leave for the night. But I'm running out of time, so let me get back to work. Stay tuned. We're back. Final update of the night. I gotta go home. It's about eight o'clock. We got a wall. Back wall's in. The start of the back wall's in. Here you go. Look from the inside. And yeah, it's all dirty from me getting in here and crawling around. But we have five layers thick on each side. Currently, including what's between the uh, the wheels, six layers thick on the floor. I still got two more layers I'm building up on the floor. We are four layers thick up here on the roof, plus the pieces I got in between the roof braces. Um, I'm working on backfilling this with foam. Got to get in here and uh, do some trim pieces on the front. Right For temporary right now, I'm getting here with some cheap spray foam, filling some of these gaps. So... Uh, give me some holes in the roof pour some good foam in here but there you go still got a lot more to do up here i'm gonna finish piecing this in right here at the bottom get this uh just pieced together flushed in right get it around these b pillars b pillars i didn't want that you know i didn't want to cut them so i gotta do do some little scraps of wood i'm gonna i'm gonna touch up in there and that's why i'm waiting to do the floor because i've already got one six inch piece i put in here as soon as I get all this stuff, and I still got this one wiring harness. This is actually the uh, the high harness for our brake lights, tail lights, um, fuel pump, all that's in here. So I had to keep this. I didn't want to worry about drilling any holes in the floor to relocate it underneath the truck. So I got it underneath the enclosure. I'm going to run it through here, do some more deadener, cover that up. But yeah, I'm going to come up, do some little pieces in here to patch this in. Then... With my last two layers coming here on the floor, it's going to cover all that up, get it all nice and even and pretty and such and such. So, uh, yeah, you're going to see some uneven pieces here and there. It's because they didn't matter. A lot of this was custom. I mean, piece by piece, custom, cutting, testing, fitting, cutting. And uh, trying to do some of these pieces by myself was a pain. The first two I was up there trying to do them by myself. I kept them behind that roof brace. The next batch... I pulled out a little bit more, get these all flush, get them right, as you can see right there, get them right where I wanted them at the B-pillar. I want to keep myself a good inch and a half of clearance behind my rubber gasket because that's where I'm going to come in. After I build my loading wall, I'm going to do two more pieces of three-quarter on the front and do what I call skinning. And I'm going to skin the front of the loading wall with two big solid sheets of this nice birch. And um, port will be here. I'll get my birch in, cut it out, flush all that. But yeah, so piece of the floor at the front, get my two layers in, get all that nice and pretty, start building my loading wall in, but um, that will come after subs. 
Still got to do more to the back wall. Right now, it's just a few pieces I got stacked in there. That's why you'll see some different layers to it. I'm going to come in from the inside. I'm going to cut me one solid piece, get my corners notched and all, get in here from the inside. That's why I'm keeping these doors off right now so I got easy access to slide wood right in there. It's That's been super helpful. But, uh, yeah, my rear doors, they are sealed. They are, they are foamed and glued shut. They're not coming back open. So you can see from the back, I got in here, did a little bit of shaping to get an angle up there with that piece of wood, but I got to get in, seal that off some more because I don't want to start pouring the foam in through the roof and it just come pouring out back here. That, that won't be any fun. So I'm probably going to do one more layer of wood back here. Um, use some other, other scraps I got, one more layer, patch on top of this, and then two layers on the inside. That'll get me my four layers thick on the back. And uh, I'll test it for strength then, see if I need some more, add some more. So right now I do have some extra room down here in the floor. I'm only doing five cell cap banks, so I need uh, 12 and a half inches-ish, 12 and a half to 13 inches is all I need, and I technically have 18. So I got five inches to play with down here. If I wanna build some more out, I got the room, we can make it happen. But uh, I think next thing on my list, I, I still gotta get in here, I'm gonna do a little more tight and tight trimming around these edges to uh, help with spray foaming before I get in there and pour some good foam. But that's it. Get some more in here. The uh, floor you saw for the B pillar, I'll get in there next. Um, I don't think I showed this on the video yet, so just in case I haven't. Let's pull these out. U18 frames. I'm gonna be unit running U18s in here. I had Jared Gibson at GeefWorks cut me some rings. Now, normally I would just get Jared to do all the rings for me and uh, assemble the tubes. That's what we did in the last big build uh, I did with the Terra. When I built those tubes, Jared cut me all the rings, brought them over, we assembled the tubes here. So just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna show you how to do this yourself the easy way. But I cheated a little bit. I had Jared cut me some rings on his CNC, give me some templates. I'm going to take these templates over to our router table and hit them with a flush bit, make some more, show you all how to make your own rings, show you how to build some tubes, all that's coming in a future video, make sure to stay tuned for that. But yeah, U18 frame rings to build up our tubes around them. Also got one uh, for the U15, so U15 frame. Got some ring templates for it too. So we're set up to uh, make some tubes in the future. That's gonna be coming in a later video. So that's it for tonight, guys. Uh, I'll uh, end in this one here. Getting this video done tonight. Have it ready to upload for y'all in the morning. Tomorrow will be uh, Tuesday. But that's it, it's after eight. It's dark outside, I'm going home. So remember guys, if you like what we're doing here on the channel, make sure and click that thumbs up button. Give me a like, subscribe, share this with your friends. Let me know how you feel in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think of the wall. It's in there and it's, it's pretty strong. So until next time, guys, I'll see y'all then.